And hello again, everyone. Good evening. My name is Franklin, one of the two co-founders of NorCal SCI. Welcome to tonight's presentation of uh, Cooking and Nutrition with Arash and Shelley. Uh, their theme is the flavors of fall. So we're looking forward to see what the two of them have cooked up for this evening. Um, as always, we have muted everyone in order to eliminate any background distractions, and that's why you can't hear any noise in the background. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, pepper me with those questions throughout the presentation. Arash and Shelly are very welcoming of taking uh, questions all throughout the evening. And then a couple of other things. Uh, as always, these presentations are made possible thanks to the generosity of our donors. So we're grateful to them. And finally, uh, we are recording tonight's presentation. And that way, if anyone needs to jump off the Zoom call at any time, or those of, uh, those of the registrants that uh, were not able to make it tonight, they'll have access to it. Uh, we will be sending it to everyone uh, first thing tomorrow morning with a copy of the recording. So without further ado, let me uh, go ahead and introduce uh, uh, Arash and Shelly. Uh, we'll start with Shelly. She's a lifeline advocate of nutrition. When she isn't working with her patients, she can be found in their greenhouse or kitchen. Uh, Shelly obtained her BS degree in nutritional science from San Jose State University in 2012. Her master's in public health in 2016 from the University of New England. And she has been working at the Santa Clara Valley Medical Center, one of the top spinal cord injury rehab hospitals in the country since 2013. Uh, she currently works in the outpatient clinic of the hospital, seeing uh, primarily uh, patients uh, uh, with uh, SCI and also spends time working with complex uh, gastroenterology issues in the outpatient GI clinic. She's also a member of NorCal SCI's advisory board. Uh, Arash experienced his uh, C5, C6 incomplete injury in 2012 uh, as a result of a fall. He has given numerous talks and shared his story of perseverance, recovery, and challenging limits to audiences large and small, including a TEDx talk. Uh, he's a Bay Area native and credits his California upbringing for his love of the outdoors, nature, and cooking activities he still cherishes as he continues to travel, explore, and enjoy new experiences. Um, he's married uh, with a daughter and a son, and Arash also serves on NorCal CI's board of directors. So uh, very grateful to both Shelly and Arash to continue to do these presentations, and uh, over to you, um, Arash. Let's see, let me just make sure that there. Bye. There you go. All right. Hello, everybody. Hello, Shelly. Hi. So Shelly oh. couldn't make it. I'm Carmen Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> I have my apple and my banana and my pineapple and all the other go. fruits on my head today. Are you not the, is that the Chiquita banana lady? I think so. I picked this okay. up a couple of years ago. Anything food related for Halloween, it's what I'll do. So <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's what we like. So, um, flavors of fall, Shelly, what do you think? How do you feel about flavors of fall and all the fun stuff we're going to cook today? I, I feel good about it. Um, our squash is gone out of the garden now. Our tomatoes are pretty much gone. Um, and winter squash is coming in full bloom. So, uh, and there's a lot you can do with it. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about winter squash as we go along tonight, as well as other uh, seasonal things like apples and pomegranates and uh, whole grains always. Awesome. Yeah, this is a fun, um, a fun session because uh, I'm really excited because I get this question so much from friends who just think, you know, pumpkins are either an ornamental thing or they go in pumpkin pie or like pumpkin bread or something, but um, that there aren't, uh, you know, great uh, uh, savory uses for pumpkins and winter squash and just fall items in general. It's not just about pumpkins and squash, but those are mm -hmm. going to be a couple of our main ingredients. So we have three fun things lined up for tonight, um, two of which include wintery squash, which I know, Shelly, you have a lot to say mm -hmm. about. Um, but we're going to make a, let's see, we're going to make a butternut squash and cauliflower and leek soup. Mm -hmm. um, and then we are going to um, make a Thai curry with uh, acorn squash, uh, as well as some other veggies. And we're going to finish with a really nice 
really fun um, kind of fall type salad um, that's going to kind of hopefully catch everyone a little surprise everybody. It's got some fun ingredients, good combo that we really like. So um, anything else to say before we start? Um, I think uh, everyone should keep in mind the upcoming holidays because all of these ideas are excellent for um, family get togethers. Absolutely. Cool. Um, all right, should we kick right into it? Sure. So we're going to play a little like stove, uh, stove Jenga over here. We're going to start. Let me ask my beautiful photographer to switch the camera and come to me. Okay, we good here? Mm -hmm. We've got our nice little spread of fall items here. Everything's ready to go. And we're gonna get right into it because we got some cooking to do. And uh, I wanna make sure we have time for everything uh, as we go. So I've got one pot heating up already. We are going to start with our soup. Uh, and this is butternut squash. Uh, and before I let Shelly, um, you know, tell you all the wonderful things about the butternut squash. I'm just gonna tell you what we're doing real quick to start. We've got our pot heating up, we've got butternut squash. And guys, I talked about this before. This is uh, what I'm about to do is something you could do with any vegetable, any squash. The idea is we're gonna cook, we're gonna get things going, you know, start cooking the vegetables, add some stock, uh, you know, broth to it and cook it some more. And then at the very end, blend it up uh, into like a puree. So this is the kind of thing you'll see in like restaurants and they'll charge you an arm and a leg for a bowl of soup that's really not that hard to make. So we've got uh, butternut squash all cut up here. One word about winter squash is they are hard to deal with. They can be. So um, I'll show you guys. This is a, uh, this is the acorn squash. And I'll talk about this in a moment when we do the curry. But uh, butternut squash, I feel like it's probably the one people are most familiar with. So I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil into this pan and I'm going to start, I have a leek. Um, this is just because I've had one, I found one at the farmer's market. A leek is kind of in the onion family. Um, I might be throwing you for a loop, Shelly, last minute, but it's just, uh, leeks are really nice. They're mild, they're sweet. It's a kind of a, a similar thing. You can easily just use an onion. I was gonna use an onion, but uh, I have this leek. So, I'm gonna throw a leek into the olive oil and get that going. And I'm um, gonna give that a couple minutes to kind of warm up and cook. And as it does, uh, I'm gonna probably in a few minutes add the garlic and then I've got butternut squash all cut up. And one quick word about it is you can get squash, butternut especially, fully cut up and peeled and ready to go. A lot of places sell it that way. I'm not against that. Um, it is kind of a pain in the butt to, to peel and cut squash. So if you got to do that, go for it. Um, use the, the pre-cut version because it'll save you a lot of time and, and hassle. But I, I did cut up uh, and this is going to make a lot of soup. So this is a big, big pot of soup, just so you know. I did use one entire butternut squash and a head of cauliflower. And I'm just completely combining them because I kind of want to. You can go with just the butternut, but I like the combination of a couple of vegetables. Um, so I'm going to let this cook for a moment. And once that softens up a little, throw in the garlic. And then after that, throw in the squash and the cauliflower. In the meantime, Shelly, I'm going to pass it to you. Okay. Uh, one other thing that you you can do is you can hold on to the seeds for any of these actually and roast them. So just keep that in mind. Um, and those things can go onto salads and into uh, some of your fancy dishes. Yeah. So um, did you save seeds or no? <laughs> oh oh oh, never mind. <laughs> he's muted because he's cooking. Answer that after. So winter squash actually is a fruit. Um, believe it or not, it's just treated like a vegetable for culinary reasons. Um, there's dozens of different varieties, um, like RR said, besides pumpkin, pumpkin's the most popular one, but um, squash, winter squash is from the Q curbid tasty or gourd family. I had to look that up because Q curbid tasty family, it doesn't even look like it sounds. Um, and I had to look up how to pronounce it too. <laughs> um, but anyways, it's in this family. Um, the colors range from yellow to orange to dark green to multicolored varieties. Um, winter squash, as we know, it has a denser 
texture and flavor, um, but their firmer flesh holds up really well in soup, like the one that our Ash is doing and stews, casseroles, breads, desserts. Um, both the flesh and the seeds are edible and that leek is generally like a giant green onion. It looks just like a blown up version of a green onion. Um, I think it's a little milder actually too. Um, the most common ones that we know, uh, winter squash are pumpkin, there's delicata, spaghetti, kabocha, um, Hubbard, acorn, pumpkins. Uh, winter squash varieties, they give you an excellent source of carotenoids, um, including beta carotene, which we know beta carotene is a precursor to vitamin A, and it's really necessary for eye health and a strong immune system for healthy skin. So vitamin A is crucial. Um, winter squash is a great source of that. Also has some protein in it, yes. Pretty much everything that we eat has protein in, in one form or another. Um, but there's a little protein in winter squash, um, a lot of vitamin C, um, B vitamins, fiber, of course, which we love, um, magnesium and potassium. Um, we already know that a diet rich in vegetables and fruit can help lower blood pressure and reduce risk for heart disease and stroke, prevent some kinds of cancer, uh, lower risk for eye and digestive problems, and, and definitely um, a diet that's high in foods like this can have a very good effect on your blood sugar. And I will keep going. <laughs> um, so I want to remind everyone um, that uh, that heart disease, uh, specifically cardiometabolic disease, um, which involves also diabetes, but mostly heart disease, um, those with a spinal cord injury have a 228% higher chance of having heart disease than those in the able-bodied population. So heart disease is especially prevalent and foods like the ones that are ash cooks and the ones that I talk about, these are protective, heart protective foods, exactly like the cauliflower and the squash that he's sauteing there. Um, these are all excellent for helping with blood pressure and, and the fiber as well is very beneficial. Um, if you have diabetes, uh, squash is a very dense filling food, but it's really low in calories too. Butternut squash has almost half the amount of carbs as a sweet potato. So um, what he's fixing right there has less carbohydrates if that's something that you need to be mindful of. Um, the fiber in squash can help prevent blood sugar from rising quickly after eating. Fiber is kind of like a buffer, keeps your blood sugar from spiking super fast. Um, the seeds from the squash contain protein and unsaturated oils, which are really amazing um, on your cardiovascular health and your end helps with blood sugar as well. Um, the beta carotene uh, that I talked about a second ago, a vitamin A uh, found in squash is classified as a flavonoid, meaning that it can protect your cells against the damaging effects of oxygen. So it's antioxidant. Um, I could go on and on as far as heart health. There's a ton of potassium in these foods, um, about 500 milligrams in, in a cup of cooked butter, butternut or acorn squash. Potassium, as we know, is helpful to counter effect, negative effects of sodium on blood pressure. And a lot of people I know, especially uh, folks that are on certain medications have issues with low potassium. And so um, having a diet rich in, in winter squash is super beneficial. Um, the list goes on and on and on. <laughs> Can I jump in for a moment, shall we? Do it, yeah. Awesome. So guys, I got the leeks going. You just wanted a couple minutes to soften those up. Same would go for an onion. I added my garlic in. You guys know I love garlic, so I added like four good cloves of garlic. And uh, once that had a minute to cook as well, I added my cauliflower. I added my butternut squash in here. There's not a lot of mystery or complication in terms of order of operations. Our goal is basically very simple, is to cook all of these vegetables and get them soft and with the broth so that when I puree it, everything's cooked and ready to go. So the order of like, if you add this too late or, you know, it's very forgiving. These are very forgiving recipes. You don't need to worry too much about it. So that's why I kind of dumped everything in here. I added a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm gonna throw a couple spices in, um, and that's why I wanted to share that real quick before we move on. Uh, I'm gonna use, uh, I, since my other fish is kind of a Thai style, 
ordinarily I'd go with like Thai flavors here too, and maybe do like ginger and lemongrass and turmeric or something. But I'm kind of just changing it up. Clove is a really nice combo for the fall, as we know, it's something that goes really in um, in like uh, what's it called, the Christmas uh, eggnog and a lot of like holiday type stuff. So this is a a really tasty uh, spice. Uh, so I'm adding a little bit of clove, um, some allspice, and some fennel seeds. Just for fun, you can add whatever you want. Um, I'm kind of keeping the flavors kind of Middle Eastern. So I like the fennel seeds. This is commonly used in Italian cooking, especially with fall flavors. I'm using whole. Uh, I'm using about a teaspoon there. So I'm throwing some fennel seeds in there. I'm using ground allspice. Uh, unlike its name, allspice is not a blend of spices. It's actually just one spice. So about a teaspoon of that. And then the clove, I'm throwing in whole. Uh, as you see, there's, they're, they're, I'll show you what they look like. They're like really small, but they, they, they've kind of woody and look like little twigs. Uh, and they're pretty strong flavor. So that's probably too many. I'm only gonna throw like maybe five in there. So I'm throwing those in. I'm not too worried about it because I'm gonna blend everything up later. I don't really care. It'll, it'll get soft and everything. Uh, and that's it. I threw my spices in. Again, you can put in whatever you want at this stage. I'm going to throw a couple other things in, sticking with the kind of fall stewy, soupy flavors. I've got a sprig of rosemary from outside. I just cut it off. I'm going to throw that in whole that, because later I'm going to pull it out. So I'm not worried about the, the whole thing. Otherwise, you could take the leaves off. You know, you could kind of just pull the leaves off, but I'm just throwing it in whole. And then I've got some sage. Sage is a really nice combo. Um, and this is what it looks like fresh. It's available everywhere, um, fresh. I really do recommend as always, herbs are much better fresh than dry. If you can't get fresh and use dry, that's fine. But sage is a lovely combo, especially with like pumpkin and winter squash. In like a lot of Italian cooking, especially like Northern Italian cooking, which a lot of dishes we've adopted in a lot of like lasagnas or pumpkin, squash, risotto, sage is like, you have to put sage in. So it's a really nice marriage of sage with like winter squash, butternut in this case. So I'm gonna chop up, this is probably a little more than I need, but that's okay because I'll tell you guys, if I have time at the end, I'll give you a little sneak extra tidbit of a nice garnish to finish off with. So I'm gonna use about, I don't know, maybe about eight or 10 leaves of sage. I'm gonna chop those up, throw them in here, and then I'm gonna actually, um, uh, I'm going to move this back and get start getting set up for the next uh, dish. But I'm going to do the sage and then come back in. Shelly, uh, I'll pass it back to you. I just want to point out all of these amazing um, seasons that he's throwing in the pot. If, if you're trying to avoid adding too much salt to your diet, say you have blood pressure issues or, or you're worried about your heart health or that kind of thing. Um, using all these spices are, it will help you, um, break the salt habit. If that's something that you struggle with adding a lot of salt to your cooking or at the table, um, having flavor is really helpful. Um, just pulling salt away and having plain bland food isn't, it's hard to do. Um, and I don't recommend it. So if you can get kind of fancy with your herbs and your spices, um, you can get around, uh, a low salt diet and, and do pretty well. Hey, what can you guys tell us about leek? Uh, we have a question from someone who wants to learn more about the qualities of leek. I don't use leek too much. Um, Arash, do you have anything like cooking wise that you want to share about it? I'm going to pull up some new. Yeah, I, I, I do. Leeks are a, a very common. They're like kind of like a chef's favorite um, for a lot of people. Um, they are sorry. They're very, very well liked because um, they have a very mild onion flavor and they get really, really sweet. So if you just chop them up and you throw them in like olive oil or something, and especially if you have a little more time, you probably want to do it slower than I did. I'm kind of speeding things up. But if you just cook them for like 10 minutes and a little bit of olive oil and add a pinch of salt to extract the liquid out, out of them, they get sweet. Um, they're so, so tasty. And that's why like chefs and a lot of professionals really like them, especially for like stews and soups. And they kind of just melt into everything. So again, it's just, mm -hmm. it's another form of an onion 
but um, they're really, really tasty. The one thing to know about leeks, if you're going to use them and they're in season right now, they're available everywhere, um, is it's one of the only vegetables that you cut before you wash. And that's because the dirt can get inside the little leaves. So you definitely want to cut it and um, chop it up, then put it in your strainer and give it a really good rinse because dirt can get stuck in there. But it's a lovely ingredient. I really like it. Um, that's leek. So I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity. I just added my vegetable stock. Again, it's kind of approximate, just enough to kind of cover everything. And man, if you guys could just smell this already, it smells fantastic. I'm going to move this. All I want to do now is I want to bring this to a boil and let it cook. I want all those veggies to cook so I can blend it up later. So I'm going to move this to the back, bring my other pot to the front and get ready to start our uh, Thai curry. Okay, and I want to add on the leeks. So the uh, nutrient profile is very similar to the onion family as well. Um, I guess the thing that stands out the most with leeks is iron. They're pretty high in iron. They have a lot of good minerals to them, um, including iron. Um, they also have some vitamin K as well. So if you're on a blood thinner, you're probably going to want to be really careful with eating too many leeks, but honestly, I don't think anyone's going to over, go overboard on leeks. You, you, they're just for the flavor for your cooking, um, but they're pretty nutritious. And I would, I would put them, you know, right up there with with the healthy onions and um, green onions and rich with minerals. Shelly, I love doing these combination cooking with you because it gives me a chance to like clean as I go, which is my favorite. <laughs> so I'm going to grab a couple of items here and get started on our Thai pumpkin curry. And when I was trying to decide what to make tonight, um, my wife actually gave me a good suggestion. She said, you know, when you showed me how easy it was to make like a Thai style curry, it really demystified it for me. So um, credit to Britta, my wife, for suggesting that because that's what we're gonna make now because this is honestly my favorite combination or, or use of winter squash. Um, squash can be sweet. I like sweet things with a spicy and like, you know, that kind of combo, which is why I think people really like pumpkin curries at like Thai restaurants and whatnot. So um, this method that I'm going to use, you can make any kind of curry with this, with any kind of vegetable or meat or seafood, whatever you want. Um, and it's very, very simple. So the, the two things you need for sure to start with is curry paste. You can make this from scratch. It's, it's, it'll take some effort. You need a lot of ingredients. I just use the store-bought and I'll show you. This is one of the most common ones out there, this brand. Um, and this brand, now I see this at like all kinds of grocery stores. Uh, for once, Trader Joe's doesn't have it. Don't rely on them. They don't have this kind of thing. But I've seen this at Safeway, Lucky Albertsons, all the big supermarkets. They have these curry paste. I'm using a Penang curry paste. It's just a different style. They, they usually have like a yellow, red, green. Um, yellow tends to be the mildest. Red is kind of like medium, but, but on, for like most people, it's kind of spicy. And then green is usually the spiciest. This Penang I like because it's kind of in the middle too. It's kind of like a red, but it's got some slightly different seasonings in it. And what's nice about when you use these curry pastes is it, it includes garlic and shallot and lemongrass and all these great things. So I don't need to add a whole lot more to this um, in terms of like garlic and onions and the stuff that you usually start with. So um, this is what you want and you buy it in this little tub. It, it's in this little bag. It's kind of in this, in this form. And then once you open it, you stick it in your fridge. So I've used most of this, and uh, but I've got a little bit left, which is perfect. So unlike most every other dish I make or like a stew or soup where you start, you start with like onions or garlic and oil, this is kind of backwards. Um, I start with the curry paste. So I just throw the curry paste into my pan or pot, I should say. And I usually don't even really need a lot of oil because there's actually a tiny bit of oil in the curry paste. And I'm just warming this up. It's a little chunk that I want to get. Okay, I think I got it. So we've got our curry paste in the pot. My pot's on medium heat. I'm going to add just a tiny splash of oil. Any oil is fine um, in this case, just to kind of get this going. And you kind of want to break it up with your spoon. 
in this case. So this is kind of toasting up. And now I'm going to grab coconut milk. Um, this is, uh, I'm using the, the regular coconut milk. I don't like using the reduced fat coconut milk because all it does is water it down. Uh, I know it's less fat, but it's one of those things that if I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it this way. And this is going to make so much curry that I'm not as worried about it. Shelly can, can fill in more about that. As we've talked about coconuts a lot. Now you have to be careful, but uh, I'm just going to throw the whole, almost the whole can in. I'm going to keep a little bit for later. Um, but all I have in there is those two ingredients. So I've got my Thai curry paste. And you can see right now it's looking really white because the curry paste isn't blended in really. Um, but I'm going to just kind of mix this in, get this warmed up before I add my veggies uh, and pass it to you, Shelly, while I do this. Okay, so I'll go off of the coconut milk thing. Um, I, I agree. That's one of those things where um, the, the regular full fat version is better. Yes, it does have a lot of fat, but if you're not eating a lot of it, it's, it's okay. It has other things too. It has a little protein in it. Um, it has a good amount of calcium and potassium, magnesium. So there's health benefits to coconut milk. It is, um, it is a plant-based saturated fat. So having a lot of it is probably not a good idea, but um, like our said, he's going to make a, a lot and it, it will stretch out. You're not going to be drinking the entire can of coconut milk. So. All right. So we have a question. All right. Garlic. Oh, sorry. I, I was just going to say just so uh, I had a little leftover garlic. So I'm throwing that in, even though the curry paste has garlic in it. I like extra garlic. So no vampires for you. Yeah, Arash will never say no to garlic. I have a feeling. Never. Uh, never but we have a question that. from someone who uh, doesn't do very well with curry. Uh, do you have any other sort of alternatives for the particular dish that you're making? Well, I mean, we're. Is it spice? I, that's what I want to know. Is it the yeah, spiciness? If it's spice, is, then I would recommend it... starting with uh, yellow curry. Yellow curry is actually pretty mild of all the curries. Uh, if you're asking, like, can you make these ingredients into a different dish. Yeah, you could make it into a stew, but it's kind of hard to make a curry without um, the curry. Um, so I'm gonna say, if you're gonna change the flavors, you can totally do that. We can do another session talking about different ways to use these ingredients. But um, for a curry, I think if it's like a spice thing, um, try yellow. Yellow curry is quite mild. And, um, and in terms of the amount, I know I didn't specify, I used about, I had what I used, what I had left, which is about kind of three big tablespoons worth, but you can always use less. You can always use yes, less, even of the yellow curry. And then you'll have a milder curry, it'll be more coconutty, um, but you, you can use less. So um, let me mention something real quick. Camera, please show this, these people, this beautiful color. You see how it's already kind of turned orange? That's because the red curry mixed in with the coconut milk. And then we added our squash in there. And uh, a quick note about the squash I'm using for this one. And then, sorry, I'll pass it back. This is acorn squash. Uh, most winter squash, um, not most, some you can use the skin, some you can't. And it kind of depends on the use. In this case, because this is gonna cook in here for a while, I'm leaving the skin on and with acorn, even with butternut, kabocha is another really popular one. You can often leave the skin on. And if anything, if the skin's still too tough when it's, when it's cooked, you, it's much easier to kind of take off on your plate. So that'll save some hassle because if you see this, this is hard to peel. I used to do it. I used to like actually say it's got these grooves, makes it really, really hard. So all I did, um, this is an extra one. I just cut off the top. I cut it in half. I scooped out the seeds and I cut it up into big chunks. That's all I did. That's what's in here right now cooking. So I'm going to get this going. And uh, as you see, I haven't done anything else. It's kind of, I'm letting kind of it soak up the coconut milk and the nice flavors. And because this is going to take a few minutes longer to cook, I'm going to let this go for a couple of minutes and get my other ingredients and pass it back for to Shelly or for questions so far. All right, um, so we have a tough audience here tonight. Uh, someone says that they absolutely hate, ca all caps, coconut milk. 
Uh, what else can they use that won't water down the flavors like water might? Broth. I'm thinking you could probably set, but it wouldn't be as creamy, but you could use broth if you would like. Yeah, it turns it into a different thing. You won't get that richness of this. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, um, you could use you could use broth. It'll be a little, like Shelly said, a little lighter, a little like soupier mm -hmm. um, than this. But but if you don't want that, I mean, that's the, the, the fat and the, and the creaminess of the coconut milk are what kind of makes this what this is. So I'm very much kind of trying to recreate. I think a lot of people now are pretty familiar, uh, many people with Thai food. I'm kind of make, trying to recreate how to do your own version of a Thai curry at home, whether it's red, yellow, green, milder, less spicy. But again, I think if you're, if you're gonna take these things out, it, it turns into something else, which is fine, <laughs> but that's a long way of saying, no, I don't have a great substitute for coconut milk. Um, I mean, I guess you could use cream or milk or something, but that turns into something else. Yeah. Yeah, I don't either. Sorry, um, guys. If you're going to do a curry, this is kind of how you do the curry. But if you're in it for the spices and you, you just really enjoy the spice, um, then you could omit the coconut milk and just make sure you have enough liquid in there to, to cook it down. That's right. Um, that should be fine. You you probably could cook it all the way down and then puree it, and it, it that would be a different thing altogether. But you would have some flavor. That's what there. we've got. That's what we've got over here. Yeah. So. When all else fails, just cook it down and puree it. <laughs> and another thing I want to mention is if you're in a pinch for time, since winter squash takes forever, um, sometimes I just put it up. I cut it in half, put it upside down in the oven, roast it for a little bit, get it started, and then you can be really careful and cut it up then, or you can just roast it all the way and just eat it that way. That's the yeah, easiest that's way good, I ever cook it. That's a great point, Shelly. It's um, winter squash is one of those things that you can find ways to, to reduce the cooking time, like you said. And, and that's a good trick that you can do even if before you know what you're gonna make. If you have a winter squash, you have it laying around. I often do this. I just do exactly what Shelly said, throw it in the oven, cook it. You can do it whole, you can cut it in half, whatever and just get it cooking. And it also makes it easier to peel. And then I'll peel it and then cut it up. And I'll be like, oh, I'll make a curry. I'll make a soup or I'll put it into chili. It's another good use for winter squash. You can dice it up and put it into a chili or any kind of soup or stew. So um, because spaghetti like spaghetti squash, said, spaghetti squash, you can make noodles. You just roast it in the oven and then take a fork and you can make noodles. That's right. Spaghetti squash has a unique texture amongst these other ones. These other ones are you want them in chunks and they, they kind of, the, the more they cook, the more melty they get and soft. Um, spaghetti squash really does kind of turn out more like a, like almost like a pasta, which is why you see so many recipes to substitute pasta with a spaghetti squash. So yeah, that's a whole different thing. All right, one, yeah, one last time, uh, the brand of the curry paste that you used again. Yeah, no problem. It's called My Ploy. So it's this brand here. Can you see it, camera? Yes. Leave her in the way. No other way. Other way? Oh, sorry. Okay. There you go. So there you go. That's the brand. And uh, they have this all over the place now. And again, I, I'm, I would recommend if you're new to this or if you're not into spicy, start with yellow. Yellow curry, super, a lot milder. Um, it's a really good starting point for this kind of thing. So um, let's check. Oh, here we go. We're starting to bubble away here. This is great. This is what I want. So you see, um, these are starting to soften up and they're getting there. What's nice about pumpkin or, you know, winter squash is why I think so many people like it in a Thai style curry or a coconut curry is they just soak up all the flavors and you can almost see it. You can definitely smell it, which is why I'm a big proponent of creating cameras with the ability to transmit smell. But this is starting to soak all this up. Um, the other vegetable I'm using is uh, green beans. Um, you can use mushrooms, you can use carrots, you can use anything, zucchini, anything you want. I like because the curry is kind of orange and the squash is kind of orange. I kind of like contrast of colors. So I'm going to throw in some green beans. Um, you can use fresh, you can use frozen. Frozen green beans are a great option. And I'm using red onion. This is just half of a red onion. Um, and again, I'm using red because I kind of want that color contrast in here. So I'm gonna just give this another stir. And I, I can already tell it probably needs a little more liquid. 
So I'm going to add a little bit of water to it um, just to bring the liquid level up a little bit. And then pretty soon this will just need to cook. And I'm going to check on my soup. It's bubbling away real nice. That'll be getting ready soon. So uh, I'm going to add that and pass it back for to show. I want to ask you a question, Arash. How come you didn't saute the onion first? I'm just curious. You totally can. Um, <laughs> and this is just the way I learned from like in when I was in Thailand and from like the way you totally can. And if you want, like with every other dish in the world that starts with like sauteed onions, it changes the flavor of the onions, which is nice. The only reason I like doing it this way is it gives you a little more control on having like onions that might be a little less cooked, which I sometimes like. So they're not just all melted in. Um, but you totally can't. It really doesn't matter. Guys, remember with like any kind of stew or soup, um, the, the process doesn't matter that much. At the end of the day, you're trying to just cook it all together. So um, you can start with the onions and garlic and then add the chili, chili paste. The other reason I like it is I kind of like that, that just that two minutes of the curry paste mixing in with the coconut milk without anything else there. I feel like it really infuses the coconut milk with a lot of great flavor. So that's that's another reason, but you totally can. There's no rule against it. Um, no, I want to try that now because I I always saute my onion first, so I'm going to try it. Yeah, it's a rare exception to the to the common mm -hmm. rule. Yes. Other questions or anything so far? I think no, I'm out other, of information other, on this yeah. one. <laughs> We had one comment that they totally agree with you about the, the microphone that could pick up smell too. So work on that, oh, will yeah. you, Karash? I'll do my best. That All would right, be awesome. so come, come check out the soup. This is cooking up really nicely. And you see our rosemary's in there, our cauliflower. It's gonna need a few more minutes. Hopefully we'll, we'll finish it in time to puree it and show you guys, but um, this is it. And if I didn't throw the cauliflower in, it would have a much more bright orange color. So just keep that in mind. It's, uh, I like the flavor that the cauliflower and the other vegetable adds to it. But if you really mm -hmm. want that really nice kind of orange color, kind of like what we have with the Thai curry, you can leave that out. So I'm gonna let that go for a few more minutes. I'm going to put a lid on this guy because guys, this dish is like 90% done, believe it or not. I mean- That's uh, beautiful. Not, not in terms of time, but in terms of just process. Look at how pretty that is. It's already, you got your green, your, this is why I like the colors, you know? And now I like the amount of liquid in here. And now I'm gonna put the lid on it. That helps keep the liquid in. So in this case, I want that. I don't wanna lose much to evaporation. So I'm gonna let that go for a little bit. And uh, I do have one more ingredient I'm gonna add later on, which is just some spinach. Um, at the end though, that only needs like a minute to cook. So I'm waiting on that. And I kept a little bit of coconut milk on the side for this exact reason. I like adding in a little bit at the end to give it that extra little, you know, finish of creaminess. So, um, yeah, I'm ready to move on to the salad whenever you are Shelly or whenever folks, um, if you're going to come questions. back and talk about how you're going to serve that curry or yeah, with rice, but yeah, we can talk about it some more. Okay. <laughs> cool. all right that's all i have for those two so far all right let's move on to this is a really great recipe guys i uh i have to say i came across this recipe elsewhere and i tweaked it to my own liking but i really really like the combo and um one reason is it's 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 a it's a version of a tabbouli, which is a, a Middle Eastern salad. I think we've talked about it before. Um, I might have even made it. Now I can't even remember. I've done so many of I these. Think I so. What I've made or what I thought I've made. So, um, but um, it's really really nice uh, because it really encompasses flavors of fall. So I've got a few things already prepped here. I had to save some time. We've got pomegranate. We've got cucumbers. A little bit of red onion and I've got some apples. So I prepped everything else ahead of time. The reason I didn't prep my apple ahead of time is that apple, as we probably know, it gets kind of brown as soon as it's exposed to air. So I held off on that. Uh, the other ingredients for this is, this is bulgur. Um, this is a whole grain. 
If you want to know more about whole grains, go back and watch the, the, the session Shelly and I did together about whole grains and how wonderful and healthy they are. And so this is about three quarters of a cup of dry bulgur. This stuff's super easy because you don't even need to cook it. I just put cold water in here, covered it by a couple of inches and let it sit for like half an hour and it cooks. Um, alternatively, you could use quinoa, you could use couscous, you could use farro, you could use any whole grain you like, brown rice, whatever you want. But this is the kind of more traditional thing. But again, go, go nuts. If, you, if you're a quinoa eater, uh, my wife is unfortunately allergic, so we can't have it too much. So, uh, but I would probably use quinoa if I could in this situation too. So I've got some cooked bulgur and then I've got in this bowl, I've got two, believe it or not, that's two big bunches of parsley, flat leaf parsley that I chopped up really fine. So I already chopped it up. I'm going to throw my bulgur into the bowl, into the larger bowl. I'm basically just assembling the salad but I want to show you guys how it all goes because it's so beautiful and so such like good flavors of fall uh, and cucumber traditionally goes into bouli, So I like that. I'm keeping some of that, but I love the addition of the pomegranate and the apple and the pomegranate. Uh, if you don't know, it's in season right now. It just started. It's a fall fruit. It's delicious. Uh, it is hard to kind of get these out. Um, of the actual fruit. There are different ways to do it. People swear by which method is the best, but this is what a pomegranate looks like in its native form. Um, really, really tasty, really good for you. I'm sure Shelly has a lot to say about it, but um, you can also buy oftentimes pomegranate ready to go in a little container um, like this. So it'll be a little more expensive because it is hard to do this, but you can do that to save yourselves time. So I've got pomegranate, red onion, uh, uh, cucumber, ready to go. I'm throwing these in here. I'm gonna cut up the apple and give Shelly a chance to talk to us all about the health benefits of these things. Okay, so pomegranates, I'm just gonna go right off that. Um, they've actually been studied for quite some time and um, they have found that they, it's possible that they can reduce bad cholesterol. So there's something with them that can uh, reduce the LDL cholesterol and actually increase the HDL cholesterol. Um, and those, uh, the LDL can lead to less plaque um, if you reduce it. And um, otherwise it can build up in your arteries, restrict your blood flow. So there are some studies that are pretty promising around pomegranate. Um, the whole seeds are definitely where you want to be. Pomegranate juice is oftentimes added sugar. So go for the seeds if you can. Um, there is rarely any nutritional benefit to any kind of juice, um, but I've talked about that a ton. And also I want to say that with pomegranate juice, um, there is a heavy amount of vitamin C, but that vitamin C is killed when they um, make the juice and they pasteurize it. So eating the seeds um, will give you an excellent source of vitamin C. Um, they are also rich in other antioxidants, which can help pr protect you from cancer. Um, any, anyways, actually, if you were to have a diet that is colorful, you would be protecting yourself from cancer, but pomegranate seeds are, are pretty awesome. That's all I have on pomegranate. <laughs> and as a, as an ingredient, they are so tasty that they are sweet, they're tart. They have a lot of acidity, which is really nice. And they just have a very unique flavor. And uh, my Iranian background, pomegranates are native to where I come from. And it's just a very cherished ingredient. The juice, they make molasses out of it. We use that to flavor things. Pomegranate molasses has become a much more common ingredient. I see it a lot in recipes. Now you see like pomegranate martinis and whatnot. It's a great, great ingredient. Don't be scared of it. If you haven't worked with it before, it is hard to get the, they're called arils, the seeds out. But again, if it's too much for you, then just go to the store and they often sell them ready to go uh, in a little, in a little packet. So um, guys, check this out. This is so, so beautiful. Look at how colorful and nice the salad is. And because I have the bulgur in here, it adds, it's a whole grain, it's adding some substance. So this isn't a salad that, you know, you eat like a lettuce salad. This is something this amount could feed, I don't know, six, eight people, you know, as a That's side That's perfect dish. for Thanksgiving. Exactly, it's a great dish for, for Thanksgiving. And all the herbs, um, Shelly, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't parsley just like, you know, packed with nutrition? And a mm -hmm. lot of people just think of parsley as a garnish on the side of like a 
plate of eggs or something with a slice of orange. Parsley is incredible. Not only does it have great flavor, but it's, it is packed with nutrients. And uh, when you use it in large amounts like this, this is two full bunches, two bunches of parsley. So um, a great way, I know we talked about this a few sessions ago, of integrating more herbs into your diet. Um, so go mm -hmm. for this. If you don't like parsley, you could use cilantro. Mm -hmm. You could do something like basil. You probably don't want to use something more woody like oregano or something. That amount is just not right for this. So use more of like the, the tender herbs like cilantro, parsley, basil, something like that. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it's beautiful. Um, do, did you go over how you get your pomegranate seeds out? I, I've tried it a number of ways and I mean, there's a, a bunch of ways to do it, but my kitchen looked like a crime scene a couple times. So. Yeah, and this time I have to say my lovely wife did it, um, but I've done it many times too. Bowl um, of what water, like to is that what she used? No, so that's one method. The people, everyone swears by their method. I actually think this method is probably the best. Although on Instagram, I did see someone do a very creative method of like cutting it in a certain way so that when you opened it, you only got the seeds. It was pretty cool. I haven't tried that yet, but... What I typically do is just kind of, I don't have my, my wooden spoons over here, but I just kind of whack it a few times on the outside and just kind of soften it up. I don't want to do much more because I don't want this to, I'm not going to cut this up yet. And then you cut it in half, not lengthwise, crosswise. So this way, not head, to, not from the stem end to the end, you know, so crosswise, cut it in half and then hold the half and then just kind of whack it with a spoon. A wooden spoon is the best. And whack it and you'll get some of that to come out. Put it into a bowl. If you get little pieces of like the waxy white part, you just pull them out. It's no big deal. Um, so that's the way I do it. Thank you. That, that's awesome. I, I, I've done the bobbing for pomegranate things and like, you know, where you put it into the water and the seeds float and blah, blah. I don't know. I've tried uh, that somebody too. Somebody asked... Like, mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, Shelly, go ahead. I was just going to say somebody asked about um, pomegranate juice again, and, and just be very careful. I mean, juice juice is very concentrated. It's missing the fiber, um, usually has a lot of added sugar. So be careful with pomegranate juice. And one last note on the soaking in water. Anytime you soak something in water, you're, you're taking away some of its flavor. So mm -hmm. that's a trick sometimes people use with onions, like to make onions milder for like raw onions and salad you soak them in water for 10 minutes and it kind of takes some of the bite out of it. So I like that method, but I don't like that it takes some of the, some of the pomegranate out of the pomegranate. So, uh, <laughs> so, and for this guys, real quick, I'm just gonna show, my dressing is gonna be very simple, very Arash classic dressing. This is just lemon juice. This is a juice of a lot of lemons. I do wanna use a good amount of lemon juice because that bulgur, the whole grain is gonna soak it up. So this is the juice of, I wanna say six lemons. I'm not going to use it all, but I'm going to use probably about half. So probably about four good tablespoons of lemon juice uh, and then some olive oil. Thank you. Some olive oil as well. As we say, watch how much oil you use. So not too much. And then salt and pepper. And I'm going to shake this up. And that's my dressing for this. That's going to be done. Uh, another addition that would be nice is uh, if you want to do like walnuts, pine nuts, um, you know, again, be careful with nuts. As Shelly always says, I like how Shelly guides us to not, they are calorically and fat dense. So careful of that, but I like that salad as is. So that's pretty much all I'm going to do for that salad. Um, going to check on both of these real quick, see where we're at. If there's questions or Shelly, you have something to add. Wow. If you were to be doing all of these dishes in your kitchen and you could take the seeds out of your um, butternut or ac acorn squash, roast them, I'd put that on that salad. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Pump, uh, squash seeds, pumpkin seeds, whatever you want. It's a really nice combo. It's also a nice finish for the soup. Mm -hmm. um, once it's, once it's pureed, or sorry, that soup, once it's pureed and ready to sprinkle some uh, pomegranate, or excuse me, pumpkin seeds on or uh, mm -hmm. something like that. It's a really nice garnish um, for that. So these are getting there. I can tell I'm just kind of feeling the cauliflower and, and everything. These are almost cooked. So I'm gonna kind of turn the heat down there. And now I'm gonna check on my curry. And guys, I've talked about this before with pureed soups. 
people have this fallacy that they think you need to add cream and milk and like make it creamy. If you puree the vegetable with the right amount of stock, you will get a creamy soup and you don't need to. Of course, if you add, someone's gonna say, well, isn't it better if you add some cream to it? Yes, of course, it's, you're adding more fat, you're adding more um, you know, creaminess to it. Of course, it's gonna probably taste better, but you don't have to. And I don't add cream to any of my, I don't cook with cream at all. Um, I, I don't add them to any of my pureed soups. So what I'm looking for when I'm making this soup is I'm looking for the right amount of liquid. And when I puree it, um, we'll see if I have time that if it's too thick, I just add a little more stock. If it's too, well, mm -hmm. I try not to get it too thin because I can't add more veggies. So you start with like a thicker puree and then kind of work your way to the right, um, to the right texture. So let me just take a peek at my Thai curry. I want to add something really quick. You can also put some navy beans or white beans into your soups and puree them because that gives kind of a, a creamy texture as well. Really creamy. Totally. And totally. fiber. So, so I'm running out of liquid here. It's probably because I turned the heat up so much because I'm trying to do this all so quickly. So I'm going to add some spinach. It looks like a lot. As we always say, it releases a lot of liquid. So I'm going to add some spinach. And uh, I'm gonna add a, almost the rest of the coconut milk. I'm just gonna leave a tiny, tiny bit at the bottom. And I'm gonna add just another little splash of water. Give it a stir because uh, this was looking a little dry. So I'm gonna do that, put the lid back on and uh, we're getting ready to kind of wrap things up. So questions, comments, anything. Well, I'm trying not to drool right now. Uh, one comment. This is from um, one of our really most steadiest uh, viewers, uh, Marcelo. Actually, he's in Florida. He attends just about every one of our presentations, and he's not a spinal cord injury. Actually, he has a traumatic or he had a traumatic brain injury, and his comment was that because of his TBI, he forgot to uh, the art of cooking, and he says thanks to. Arash and Shelly, I have started cooking again. So kudos to, to the two of you for um, having an impact on someone like uh, like Marcelo. That's a really, really lovely comment. Thank you. Thank I have you, no Marcella. idea how happy that makes me. Uh, and guys, look at that. I just I added the spinach 30 seconds ago, just while Franklin was talking. You see it's already wilting down. And now this is starting to get the right amount of liquid. My, my squash is pretty much cooked. My green beans are cooked. And now it's really a matter of personal preference. If you like it more liquidy, you can add more stock or water. Um, and if you like it a little thicker, you can take it as is. So, I mean, this is, this is close to done. I'm gonna let this go for a couple more minutes, but not much more. And, and if you notice, I didn't add any salt to this dish because curry paste is very, very seasoned. So keep that in mind too. If, like I said, you're using, I said, if you're new to this, you know, make yellow curry, use less of the paste, that's totally fine. But just know then that if you taste it and it doesn't taste that, like that much, then you might need to add some seasonings to it, some more spices, some turmeric, some ginger, something like that, and a little bit of salt. But I'm not adding salt. I don't even need to taste it. I know just from the color of that curry paste, um, that that is going to be perfectly seasoned uh, because the curry paste does have a lot of salt in it. Mm -hmm. So, um, so our salad is done. Uh, our curry is pretty much done. I kept a little bit of cilantro just to garnish it with. So I am, I'm going to, I guess now I'm going to move this back and bring the soup back to the front. Can't believe I'm using my bare hands and these are hot, but whatever. I'm numb to it now. Um, so I want to show one more time where we're at with our soup. Let me rinse off my spoon so I don't mix the flavors. So here we are now, most of our veggies are totally cooked. They're mushy. That's exactly what we want. And I'm going to try to puree this. This is your, your favorite tool to make any kind of pureed soup. So if you like, you know, any kind of, you know, pureed vegetable soup, literally anything you want, get yourself one of these. This is called a hand blender or immersion blender. 
They're not expensive. They're really, really easy. If you don't have one of these, that's okay. What you would want to do is you would want to cool down the soup, put it into a blender or a food processor. Do not do it while it's hot. Otherwise it's going to go everywhere and you're going to make a mess in your kitchen and maybe burn yourself. So you have to let it cool if you do that method. So cool it down, take a ladle, spoon it into a blender, blend it up and then put it back in your pot. And you can, you can do that two days in advance and then just warm it up when you want to eat it. Totally fine. But I like this because it lets me keep everything in the pot. Um, but my outlet, I don't know if I can reach here. So we'll see if I can get this over to here, if I can do it, or if I need to move the pot over, um, over to the other side of the counter. So give me a moment to figure that out. And again, more questions or Shelly, please jump in. I want to add another trick. If you don't want it to be completely pureed, um, you can always take uh, like a glass Pyrex and remove uh, a, a chunk of it, like a big portion of your soup. You can puree that uh, once it's cool enough and then add it back and that, that'll that leave some texture to it, but it'll also cream it up a little, make it a little bit um, creamier. That's just another trick. This particular soup will be delicious, completely pureed like he's doing though. So let me put this down. Can we move it over? All right. So we can. I'll just hold this here while my lovely assistant moves the pot. Am I too close or is this okay? So, all right. So my, my outlet doesn't reach. Uh, one of the many reasons I want to remodel this kitchen. Um, so uh, we're moving this over. I'm gonna puree it and show you guys just how easy it is and how beautiful and silky and creamy it is with no additional cream or anything of any kind. So I'm gonna pass this back to you. By the way, this do we have to pay, give your assistant a pay raise for helping you? We, we might, we might. She yeah, might she's a little help. bit more involved this time She too. is. She is. Okay guys, so check it out. I've got my, my vegetables, I've got my liquid. Now I've got my hand blender. This one's simple, it's got two speeds, low and high. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in here. I'm gonna start with low. Sorry about the noise, but I'm just gonna puree. And if, you see, if you've never seen this before, it's got a blade in here. So you have to kind of move it around the pot. Be careful if you're using non-stick pot, this can scratch the bottom. So I would suggest um, just not touching it all the way down to the pot, um, but this is not nonstick, so I don't need to worry about that. So I'm gonna start curing this up, give a chance for any other questions or comments, and we'll check back in in a minute. So apologize again for the noise. Franklin, do we have any questions? No, no questions as of right now. We're good, good, okay. But how are um, you planning on serving that now, Arash? soup yes i like this soup with a nice garnish so with any kind of puree soup i like something crunchy on top so once i puree this up i'll put it in a bowl and you can serve it with uh, a spoonful of like uh, plain yogurt or sour cream if you want to get you know more decadent um, because i didn't really add anything unhealthy into that i don't feel so bad um, doing that and it makes it a little nice to give it that little finish. But then I like something crunchy. So it can be, like we said, pumpkin seeds. Um, you could chop up some chives or any kind of fresh herbs. I'll probably add a little bit of like parsley to this as well. And um, yeah, really just anything you want. But I like that combination of like a creamy garnish and an herbaceous or a crunchy garnish. So come, come a little closer and I'll show you. So you see now it's starting to puree. We're getting there. And I, think it's gonna, I think it's gonna be totally perfect, um, you know, in terms of the texture, but we'll see. I would serve this with a piece of crusty whole grain bread, or I just started making sourdough bread. So something like that. And guys, this, this general recipe you can do with any vegetable you want, combination of vegetables. I've done this with like broccoli or if you've had potato leek soup, that's a very common version. Leeks, mm -hmm. which we talked about, and potatoes. Anything you want, as long as you get the proportion of liquid and vegetables right, 
um, you can puree any kind of soup. And this is the kind of thing that it's so rich in flavor. When you taste it, you think it's been cooked for like two days, but you guys saw I pulled this off in like 25 minutes, so. I think we need to have you taste test all three and give us your like, you know, some some kind of satisfaction here. I'm Maybe Britta, totally, someone needs to taste it and make a face. <laughs> totally okay with that. Well, my salad's lovely. I just love that combination. And if you've never had a salad with pomegranates in it, you'll see how delicious that is. It's just like a little burst of flavor. <clears throat> now for the soup. And you see how thick it is. This is almost even, you know, on the thicker side. If you want it a little thinner, you could add some more stock or something. But look at how nice and like velvety that is. Gorgeous. I'm gonna taste this. That's awesome. Oh, it's so tasty. It just needs a little bit of salt, um, but it's pretty much ready to go. And then let's finish with our Thai curry. Let's show you guys where we're at because I know we're out of time. And look at that. Oh, beautiful. How beautiful is that? You got the red of the onion, you got the orange curry, the orange hummus, acorn squash, and the green beans and the spinach. And there is no better way to serve that other than just over some nice fluffy rice. I'll finish it off with a little cilantro, just whole like that, boom. Like, doesn't that look like what you'd get from a Thai restaurant? And again, we sure. pulled that yeah. off in, you know, less than 30 minutes. So that's all ready to go. I'm going to relieve my camera uh, lady and turn it around to, to me so we can go deal with our young, young children who have arrived. And um, yeah, give any more chances for questions or comments now. So I hope, I hope that was helpful, guys. I really do. I think... Uh, I think, again, the biggest thing I wanted to try to do today was to show that these ingredients that people think are only can only be in sweet or in like pumpkin spice lattes or something like that, which I don't understand what the deal is with those. I think that's whatever. I'm not a fan. I would much rather eat a Thai curry with pumpkin or butternut or whatever any day. Uh, it's yeah, just yeah. Uh, such a great combination because it's so sweet and earthy and then you combine it with these strong Thai flavors of shallot and ginger and lemongrass and garlic and like mm -hmm. man there's like nothing and it better. tastes better when you're benefiting your health like this it tastes better yeah uh, we had one question that just uh, snuck in the person is asking what should they look for when picking out a pumpkin really it's it's uh it's very forgiving again because uh winter squash stays for months um i keep them in the garage um at this stage of the year, my veggie box that I get every week sends me a winter squash pretty much every week. I don't <laughs> cook it right away. Uh, if you keep it, you know, in a cool kind of just like on your counter or in, the, mm -hmm. in a pantry or something, uh, but especially if you put it somewhere like in a garage or in the colder part of your kitchen, it'll, it'll keep, keep for, for a month, two months, months, three months, literally months. Yeah. yeah. So it really doesn't matter. You just want to go pick, pick a squash that you are more able to prep. So um, you need a good knife. You need a sharp knife, a heavy knife. They're hard to cut through. They're hard to cut into pieces. Um, butternut, that's why I think butternut gets all the glory because it's kind of the easiest of all the squashes to prep and cut. Mm -hmm. uh, and because most of these squashes, again, you can leave the skin on for many, many dishes. Um, and don't be ashamed to buy it pre-cut. Just don't because they've buy got all different kinds of squash already cubed up in a little container. You can do that too. It's a great, great uh, time saver and, and well worth the cost and for the effort, um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Very good. Um, okay, Shelly, I'm going to give you the last word to let people know why you why you got your um, costume on like that. I wasn't going to do this, but it's Halloween this weekend, and I, I have this Carmen Miranda hat and decided uh -huh. that, you know, I haven't worn it for a while, so I'm going to wear it tonight. So I surprised. <laughs> Very good. Well, you look spectacular. There's fruit okay. on there. There's an apple. Yes, uh, definitely. Taken with a the theme. <laughs> yeah, banana, <laughs> pineapple. <laughs> Not sure if those are, are those uh, fall fruits? Uh, no, banana? no. So no, I, yeah. I kind of want so to emphasize So you're kind of like apple. a couple of seasons out. <laughs> yeah, and there's probably a spider in here too. So I'm anxious to uh -oh. get it off my head. Very good. <laughs> 
Arash, uh, thank you once again, Shelly. Thank you. Uh, as always, the two of you are just wonderful uh, playing off of each other. And um, and just it's really especially Arash to explain, explain people how with some of these simple uh, ingredients, they could uh, make some outstanding uh, dishes. And eating healthy doesn't have to be complicated. Healthy. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to stick uh, with that pomegranate. In fact, I have a pomegranate tree in my backyard. Ooh. So that there, there, you know, there are about a dozen of them. I'm kind of wondering, are they ready? Are they ripe? You know, all that stuff. So I think I'm going to start hitting them up uh, pretty soon because as you said, Shelly, they're really, you said they've been well researched to reduce uh, LDLs um, mm -hmm. and increase HDL. So looking forward yeah. to that. There's okay, everyone. Research. Very good. Great uh, Thanksgiving I, ingredient, which I think might be the topic of our next session, maybe Thanksgiving stuff. So very good. good thing to keep in mind for the holidays. Yeah, in fact, our next session is going to be on the 16th of November, everyone, and uh, details of it will be forthcoming in the newsletter. Uh, thanks again, Arash, and thanks to Britta, uh, our expert video editor slash um, thank you, Britta. Uh, uh, kitchen assistant now, uh, all of a sudden. And thank you, Shelly, and thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, as always, uh, we thank our generous donors for making these presentations possible. And as I mentioned, uh, you will receive a, a copy of the video uh, recording of this uh, presentation first thing tomorrow morning in your inbox. So um, have a good evening, everyone. Thank you, Arash. Thanks, Shelly. Thank Bye. you. Okay. Bye. Bye.